So the first time I tried filming this, the mic wasn't on. Anyhow, these are the best books that I read in 2020. And start. Hi, hello, how are you? My name is Sarah from Sarah's Reading Nook and today we are going to be going over the best books that I read in 2020. Now, for the purposes of this video, I am including all the books that I read in 2020 going from January 2020 to this month, December. <laughs> Before we start, please don't forget to give this video a like and also to subscribe if you like this video for more content. Also, make sure that your notifications are on because we still have at least one more Bookmas video. And that's coming out on Wednesday, but still. Notification bell, put it on. It's always a good idea to put that bell on. Okay. So today I'm so excited because this is the top 10 of the books that I, myself, and my cat Olivia have read. So we took a lot of time discussing these books. We went back and forward. There were a couple of books that, you know, we had to compromise on, but this is our top 10 books. It is going to be a countdown going from number 10 to number one. 10 being my least favorite of my top 10 favorites of like 51, 52 books that I've read this year. And it's going to go all the way to number one, which is my absolute favorite book of the year. If you would like to guess which books are like my top three, my top one, there won't be like that many surprises because I've talked about a lot of these books already <laughs> and I have mentioned them in my description box. But don't look. I think it's pretty obvious what's going to be on my list, but there may be a few surprises. So let's go and go over my top 10. So coming in at number 10 is The Traveling Cat Chronicles, and this is by Hiro Arikawa. So in this book, it is just so adorable. You see Nana, who is a cat, and she is traveling along Japan with her owner, Satoru. They meet many different people along the way. They stay at a B&B &B, and you find out a little bit more about each of them. What I loved about this book is just how absolutely adorable it was. I was listening to the audiobook and it was narrated from the cat's perspective. And that was just such a good way to carry out this whole entire book. I love books that are like narrated from the cat's perspective or movies. I believe it was called She and Her Cat. That was a very short animated film anime movie. And I cry every time. Now this book, I also shed a few tears. So this should have been included in my books that made me cry in 2020, but alas, it was not. It is so emotional, so adorable, and me and Olivia both loved it. So the next book is I'll Fly Away by Rudy Francisco. Now, Rudy Francisco is a great, awesome, amazing poet. His poems, they go over very challenging subject material, but also he is very good at incorporating some poems about love and hope as well. So it spans quite a lot of topics, police brutality, prejudice, social issues, to poems of love. He is definitely one of my favorite poets. And I do mention this book in my 2020 new releases. So this book just came out in November. There's so many poems that I bookmarked. I absolutely loved it. And I recommend Rudy Francisco. And also while you're at it, I would also check out his other work, which is Helium which also was just phenomenal. Okay, so coming in at number eight is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Oh, this one, it was just written so beautifully, narrated great. So in this book, you see two girls and one lives in the Dominican Republic, another lives in the United States. And so they have similarities that are connected to an individual whose life was lost during a plane crash. The more you hear from each one of the girls, the more you learn about what their ties are to that individual, but also the similarities themselves between the two. 
I didn't know very much except for that premise going into this book and that's kind of all that I want to leave you with. And the reason why is because there are just so many different intricacies and twists that are associated with this book that I absolutely love. On the Goodreads page, I would not read the synopsis. I would just kind of like go in just knowing those facts. And if you do like me, your mind is going to go because it's so cool. The way it was narrated for the audiobook, I believe that the author narrates part of it and then there is a voice actor who narrates the other part. It, and it was done in such a beautiful way. I really felt that the prose felt very passionate and intense at times, funny. It just basically ticked off all the boxes that you could ever want. And so for that reason, it was one of my favorite books of the year. And I am so looking forward to reading like her other books in the future. Coming in at number seven is A Mind Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott. So now this book is written by an indigenous author and it focuses on North America, but most prominently I feel in Canada. And it is a memoir and it is nonfiction as well. And so in this book, you see how indigenous authors are treated within the writing community in North America and also very important issues as well to the indigenous community. These are cultural, but also social justice, criminal justice, etc. And the reason why I think that this book is so good and so well written is because it really shines a light on issues that really need to be discussed and looked at very thoroughly by Canadians. I listened to the audiobook for this one and I really loved how it was narrated. And I just kind of walked away from it being sort of awestruck. And it was most definitely one of the best books that I read this year. So again, that book is called A Mind Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott. So the next book on my list is called A Stranger at Home and it's by Christy Jordan Fenton and Margaret Pogiak Fenton. So this book goes over a 10 year old girl. Her name is Margaret Pogiak and she is returning home. Her family lives in the Arctic and upon going home, her mother mentions that she cannot recognize her girl. So essentially, Margaret has to relearn her culture. She also has lost a taste for food that her family makes. And so this idea of belongingness is very prominent in this book. I really loved how it was written and how it was written about a child, but also dealing with very complex issues. And I absolutely loved it. There are several other books written by this author that I definitely want to read in the next year. And so I definitely recommend this book highly. <laughs> the Boy, the Fox, the Mole, and the Horse. Now this is such a beautiful book and I have discussed it in quite a few videos. I've discussed it in a reading wrap up, a uplifting book recommendation video, books that made me cry in 2020. And what I love so much about this book is that it goes over very profound, very deep sort of questions and challenges and condenses it into a single page with a quote and a very simple illustration. And I think the ability to do that, I don't know if very many people can. I did cry quite a few times reading it because it just embodied emotion so well. Now it is definitely a book that I would recommend sort of reading and be able to like read it mindfully. So distractions off and I definitely recommend that you read it. Okay, so coming in at number four is Black Girl Unlimited and that is by Echo Brown. So in this book, we have Echo who is our protagonist and she is also a wizard. Throughout her life, you see her sort of encounter various difficulties and challenges and how she sort of uses her magical ability. And it is done through a magical realism lens. So yes, she is using her ability, but sort of in a most interesting way from a spectator's point of view. I think that the magical realism aspect in this book works so well. You are shown quite a lot of her internal struggle as she faces various obstacles, ones that have to do with herself, to do with her family, to do with 
her education, not her abilities, but the resources that she's provided. And you also see how she navigates various friendships as well. There are quite a lot of content warnings associated with this book. Definitely give those a look before getting into it, but it was an amazing book one that I highlighted so many different quotes from, and it was actually a Top Shelf Society book club pick. So I definitely recommend Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. Definitely one of the best books I've read this year. So now we are getting into our top three books. And so these are really the best of the best. And again, it was a lot of deliberation with me and Olivia, but we narrowed it down. So coming in at number three is actually this book right here, Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And now this book is a book that I just loved. I have a reading vlog going over it, the Top Shelf Society. We discussed this book in great length. And so let's go over the plot. So in this book, you have Noemi, who is a very strong female lead. She is interested in anthropology and she currently lives in Mexico with her family. Now, one day her and her family get a letter and that letter is by her cousin who is currently living in a very strange living situation. Now she, gives a desperate plea for help. And in that letter, she says some very strange things. So she mentions that the walls are talking to her. She mentions that there are ghosts, she's being poisoned. And of course, this is very alarming. They are very alarmed at her well-being and also what sort of state she is currently in. So Noemi's father says to her, I want you to go check on your cousin. And if you go and do this for me, I'll allow you to study anthropology. But she ends up going. And there are a lot of strange things start to happen. And that is where I'm going to end the hook for this book. That's all I really knew going into it. Actually, I didn't even know that. I just knew it was about a haunted house. The reason I love this book is because if you want a book that goes over a haunted house, but kind of has different elements to it. This is the book. Some very important social issues are discussed in this book, scientific issues. It is dark at times. It is always captivating, in my opinion. And it does demonstrate various pacing. For quite a lot of this book, it is slow paced, but there is a point where it becomes fast paced and you're kind of like, what? There were a lot of despicable characters, which I actually like in a book. And there is an aspect of this book that I honestly, I can't really articulate it very well. But sometimes when you read a book, there's just this like magical thing that happens. You know, you may discuss it with others. You may see that there are flaws in writing. You may see that there are some issues with the plot, etc. But what this book has for me is it just captivated me so intensely. So this was the perfect book about a haunted house when I needed a book about a haunted house that was different. And it just kind of filled a void in my reading experience that I just have not been able to grasp for the last, I don't even know how many years. And so it is my number three top best book of the year. And it just so happens to be a top shelf society book. Okay, so the next book is a classic book and it was written by Ray Bradbury. And I'm sure you can guess it, it is Fahrenheit 451. The whole concept of this book, it centers around the burning of books and it centers on why society would ever wanna do that. You know, is ignorance bliss? What is the cumulative effect, the cumulative consequence of not being able to read books? And it turns out in this book, that issue is explored quite heavily in a dystopic world. What's interesting about this book is that you can read it, you can think, why would we ever burn books? But it has happened in the past. And as a book lover, reading this, it's incredibly challenging. But I love that about this book. I love that it challenges you. It makes you feel uncomfortable. It kind of makes you question humanity, social issues, social hierarchies. And it's not the book that you open up and you read while you're trying to have a chill day. I don't recommend that you just open this book and read it. It would be very difficult to do that. I would turn to this book 
if you want to face that question head on, why would firefighters ever want to burn books and what would be the consequences? That's why I think that you should read this book. It is an answer to that question, but I warn you, it's a terrifying answer. And I said it during our Top Shelf Society book club meeting. It is one of the best books I've ever read, let alone of 2020. And I think that it's had an impact on me that is going to last for a very long time, if not ever. <laughs> after I read it, I sort of felt similarly as I did after I read The Handmaid's Tale. I think that these questions are incredibly important, especially if you love books. So that is my number two book, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Okay, so my number one book is a book that I just finished. If you want to guess what that book is, you can leave a comment below in this book. Yes, it is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. And this book took me 25 days of reading to finish. For the first few, I was reading just sort of a little bit each day. This book is like 800 and something pages. Like Fahrenheit 451 and Black Girl Unlimited and really all my top favorites, it's really important to look at the content warnings before you read this book. Now in this book, you get very, very well acquainted with the protagonist who you learn is Jude. And Jude is this extremely talented, very bright individual. And he's had a very rough go at life. He doesn't have a family, but there is an element of found family which is just beautifully done. And you learn about him and most, I guess, specifically his three best friends and what life is like pursuing their dreams in New York City. Now, with A Little Life, it is 816 pages, at least the paperback is and it is an epic. It goes over the span of 30 or so years of Jude and his friends and their lives. There are seven parts, and within each part, there are chapters within. So you've probably heard that a lot of people cry when they read this book, that it is capable of having a profound effect due to how sad it is. And so I did go into reading this book knowing that ahead of time, but because this book is over 800 pages, the amount of, I guess, affection you have for Jude and his friends is intense. There have only been a few times where I have read a book and felt so deeply about the characters. And you don't just fall in love with Jude, you really fall in love with um, people in his life in this book. There are parts that are incredibly frustrating, but then there are parts that really make you laugh. So as I was reading this book, I would open it and every night for the past 25 days, I had been reading just a tiny bit of it and I really wanted to read this book and stay with the characters for as long as I could. But I got to this part in the book where I started to try and read it fast and I wanted to read it fast for a couple of reasons. One, it was to peel the band-aid off quick, but also I really wanted to know um, what would happen in certain aspects or certain parts of this book. And so you really should read the content warnings. I don't think that this book is for everyone, but for the reader, the longer you stay with Jude, the main character, the more important it is that you stay because in doing so, it's almost like you're his witness and you're going through his life with him. I think that is incredibly important. So this is by far my favorite book of the year. It wasn't necessarily the most joyful, but it was by far the best. So those are my top 10 favorite books of 2020. Well, top 10 books that I read in 2020. Let me know what some of your favorites were. Are there any that you agree with on the list? Are there any that you are like, totally in disagreement with. I know that this one can be a little bit controversial and so can this one. But anyway, those are my absolute favorites. Please don't forget to give a like and also to subscribe if you like this video for more content. We would absolutely love to have you here. And the Portuguese word of the day is ano. Ano. Ano means year. 
that's everything for today. Bye!